Hey guys, welcome to my latest landscape photography guide here in Tasmania. Quite excited at the moment. I'm heading down into the southwest of Tasmania, which is about far southwest as you can get on the island to where the road runs out. I'm going to explore an area called the Eastern Arthurs, which is a very interesting mountain range to go and check out. I'm going in on a six to seven day trek to get in and out of this mountain range. The hike itself is all unassisted so there's no guides, there's no huts, so everything that you need needs to go on your back to get in and out of this place. It's supposed to be one of Australia's toughest walks or it's classed as one of its toughest walks due to the fact that it's super remote, it's quite hilly, rocky, dangerous, all those cool things that come with a mountain. I've just been through a pretty interesting area. There's been some bushfires blazing in the area, so I hope that doesn't impede the view when I get down here. And there's a bit of cloud coverage as well, which is also a little bit suspicious when you're going to check out some mountains. But for the photo I want, um, there's a peak down here called Federation Peak. It's a pretty famous peak, and it's also quite shy when it's cloudy as well. So hopefully the two days it takes to hike in there, I'll get a bit of visibility and try and get a, a good photo of the mountain. And just on safety, if you ever think about coming to Tasmania and you want to do some unassisted hikes like this, it's always advised that you go with someone else. And I'm here with Daniel Carafillis, who you'll get to see along the mountain trail. So you'll see a lot of hiking, you'll see a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. That's what it's all about, to get that really cool image. And I do believe this will probably be one of the hardest blogs I've done to go and crack a good photo, so stay tuned and check out the Eastern Arthurs. So I've just arrived to the start of the trail for the Eastern Arthurs and like all these sort of expeditions it feels like a pretty good idea until we put the pack on and fill the extra 25 kilos. But that's part of the mission for this and if you want to get the good pictures then you've just got to bear the weight and just go at it so stay tuned. So I've just spent the last two hours on trail and making excellent ground. This is my fifth trip through this track along to the Western Arthurs and Eastern Arthurs and usually you're met with hours of trudging through what's called pitted bog, basically where you fall up to your knees, down to your waist, maybe fall on your back in the mud and it's certainly very fatiguing. So this trip today, even though it's a little bit wet at the moment, it's been a real luxury and I'm starting to get some nice epic views of the Western Arthur range in the background. So I've been on trail now for close to seven hours and I'm starting to feel a little bit tired. I've been following this mountain line here across the um, kind of the open button grass plains what they call them here in Tasmania and the end of this range has just been staring at me all day or I've been staring at it all day and I really think it's worth a picture it's sort of where the end of the mountain range sort of sits there's a beautiful play of light there at the moment and I'm kind of hoping that I get a nice dash of light on the peak itself there's a bit of blue sky up high I'm not even going to worry about setting up on the tripod here, I'm just going to take a handheld shot and I'm going to set the camera on a pretty basic setting, I'm just going to shoot at f8 at a 30th of a second and I'm not going to try and do a time lapse, I'm not going to try and do a long exposure, I just want to try and capture the beautiful highlighting of these mountains as the light hits it and it will make me feel a little bit better about the next two hours if I've already got myself a beautiful photo before I get to the camp. 
So I have just taken two exposures. Um, I don't think they're too brilliant, but like I said, it's just the exercise of getting the camera out and photographing these mountains. I've found that sometimes if you think, oh yeah, I'm just gonna wait another hour or two to get a bit closer, you might actually miss the opportunity to photograph the mountain at all because the weather certainly dictates the mood down here. And if those clouds move right in and got really angry, then I might not even see this mountain for another three or four days. So the opportunity is now and I'm certainly enjoying myself down here and hopefully over the next few days I'll get some more really nice images. So it's been an epic day and we have arrived at our first campground which is a beautiful little setting. The day has been very long with lots of hiking. I do believe it's going to be worth it. I'm so glad I got that picture in the last few hours of the day of that mountain range with that beautiful shaft of life across it. I think that if I didn't take that picture I wouldn't have got a picture of the mountains today as the light soon went very dim after I took that photo, so just acting on impulse sometimes as a photographer is very important or you might miss out altogether like I said a little bit earlier. I'm going to actually take a photo of a small river today, something I never expected I would do trekking into the Eastern Arthurs. I'm actually at the very beginning of the Huon River, which is a quite a special river here in Tasmania. If you ever get a chance to go down to the Tahoon Airwalk, you'll see the Huon River, and it's a very, very big river, but right here it's nothing much more than the stream. I'm going to cross this very slippery stream, and I'm just going to head up this bank a little bit. I've actually found a little landscape I want to take an image of. It's probably not a stream that I would normally take a photo of, but because it's the Huon River, I'm actually interested in it and even though it doesn't have lots of water running down through the stream, I think it's quite a chaotic setting with the overhanging ancient trees and some beautiful sculpted rocks in the middle of this little river and the water down this part of Tasmania is very rich in tannin which gives the water quite a reddish look against the quartzite rocks at the bottom of the stream so if you bear with me I will set my camera up and talk you guys through it. So I have just taken my first image of this little creek or the Hue and River as they call it down in here which is quite amazing. I've used my 35mm prime lens to get in nice and close to this beautiful foreground. The stream certainly looks very contrasting and alive with the tannin coloured water against the quartzite rocks. And I'm very happy with this image just to finish off the day. I have brought two lenses on this hike. I really don't like carrying too much gear on multi-day hikes as this one is actually going to be closer to six or seven days. And Unfortunately, every bit of gear that you think you need, you have to carry over the duration of those days. But I have been caught in a situation where I haven't had the right lens for the job and it's a little bit heartbreaking to come all this way into the Tasmanian wilderness without the right gear. So I have brought an, a 35mm prime and I've brought an 85mm prime. The reason that I really like the 85 as well is sometimes the mountain peaks on their own need isolating from the foreground and unfortunately a 35 mil won't do that in a lot of different situations. With this image I've just taken, I've just used a 35 mil. I have actually put a circular polarizer on it as well and I have done it at f11 with an exposure of eight seconds, which has given me a beautiful smooth stream in the foreground. <laughs> Thank you. 
and now it's actually quarter to eight. I have got the advantage of daylight savings here in Tasmania, but for now I'm going to go and collect some of this beautiful fresh water, boil it up and make myself a really nice cup of tea and a nice meal and keep myself warm and refreshed for another day of climbing the mountain. So we're halfway through day two, and if you can see that right in the background, that's the Eastern Arthurs, and that really cool looking peak in the background is Federation Peak. Just starting to feel a bit tired. We've just crossed over what's called the Razorback, and legs are a little bit fatigued, and it's a pretty hot day, which is good for mountain clarity but it also makes it a little bit tougher walking up and down through these button grass ranges here um, tonight hopefully going to get halfway up the range and i think it it sounds good on paper to make it to certain spots but i think it really just depends on how you're feeling on the day is how far you travel down here optimism's good but when you're on the ground running, things definitely change down here with track conditions and obviously your heat, maybe weather, all that sort of stuff. So I'll just cruise up around this little knoll and give you guys one last look at the peak. And hopefully it's not the last time we see the peak and the weather stays pretty good for the remainder of the trip. So it's coming up to six o'clock on the second day and feeling pretty shattered actually. Just climbing this lead, it's called the Luckman's lead and it's quite fatiguing really. So I think we're just gonna climb for probably another hour and I'm gonna have a bit of a rest and pitch a tent somewhere if we can find a clearing and just have a nap and have an early hit in the morning. Um, for one photo or two photos, this is certainly a lot of work but in the name of trying to get a good picture as a landscape photographer i think these are just the sort of things that separate what i do or what some people do from mainstream so let's get extreme <laughs> So it's almost evening here in Tasmania on the Eastern Arthurs. We've decided to set up camp three quarters of the way up the, the side of this mountain. Just starting to feel a bit tired, so I thought we'd take a bit of a rest and get up early in the morning. I've been looking for photographic opportunities, but being such a hot day here in Tassie, there is a lot of mountain haze or a lot of haze in the atmosphere, which makes crystal clear photography almost non-existent. I've really fallen in love with this mountain in the background here and I've just taken a few images with my 85mm prime lens and I spoke earlier about bringing two lenses so I'm really glad I've got this one. I put a circular polarizer on it just to add a little bit of warmth through the blue. Uh, I haven't bothered setting up a tripod or getting too extensive with my exposures and whatnot because I just don't feel that the light here at the moment is really worth playing with. I think being a easterly facing mountain I might look out early in the morning and I think there might be amazing sunrise here if the clouds play well enough and play the game to show the mountain. There's a lot of cloud coming in the mountain now with the colder temperature so there's also the threat that that might be their first thing in the morning. So for now I'm going to go and get some sleep 
even though it's still daylight, but man, I'm really exhausted and I'm looking forward to put my head down for the next 10 hours. So it's day three and I didn't get up too early for a sunrise. I checked outside and there was just too much mist coming off the mountains. It's about eight o'clock in the morning. I don't want to spend too much time here doing my photography at the moment because I've still got to climb that big beast up in the background there and I don't want it to be too hot. But what is quite spectacular at the moment is looking due south or due southwest maybe and the mountains are starting to really come alive with some catch lights across the top of the mountains and the sun is just starting to hit the foreground a little bit so I'm getting a nice depth of field or a 3D layering effect with the sun across the valley and these pictures are going to look quite special. So I've got my camera set up with the 35mm Distagon. I didn't want to zoom in too far in on the mountain at this stage. I wanted to get that depth with these mountains in the foreground and lots of sky. And as we speak, there's some more fog bellowing in from the north and this scene is quite superb. Camera settings, I've got my Schneider polarizer on and I've got the camera set up on f11 at 1 25th of a second. And that fog rolling in is framing this foreground beautifully. Now I'm getting tons of fog coming in, which is quite cool, but I've lost my foreground completely. So I'm just gonna wait for the gap in the fog. I can see some breaks coming from the north, so it's all about just timing and hopefully a little bit more of a, a burst of sun will really animate this scene. Quite excited at the moment to be up on the Eastern Arthurs, despite all the climbing and crawling through the mud. If that sun punches through in a second on that blue, this is going to be incredible. So that's the last of the fog rolling through in a second. probably haven't got any real hope of seeing the view right over in the distance there but that is Federation Peak in all its glory that is the peak that most people who do the east or do the eastern Arthurs want to see and even climb I'm not really here for the climb myself but I'm here just for the photography I've stopped here in the middle of the day it is noon noon exactly and the reason I've stopped in probably the most difficult light of the day is I really want to photograph this mountain and this could be my only chance. The weather here can be notorious. It can come in in a moment of hours and it could be no visibility for the next week. So I have taken two different types of image. I've taken one with a 35mm Zeiss lens and I've brought this beautiful little pencil pine tree down there into the foreground to get a bit of separation from the back. But I've also put on the 85mm, which I'm so grateful I've carried, and I think that's the third time I've said this, to photograph things off in the distance. That mountain is still an incredibly long way away. I am planning on getting closer, but that 85mm lens has certainly pulled it right in. For both exposures, I've shot around the F11 mark, and I've used the circular polarizer for both of the images. I think that it just adds a little bit of warmth to the landscape here in Tasmania especially with the sun so high. It's starting to haze up a little bit, but I'm really, really stoked with these couple of pictures. And I'm also stoked to be having another break because these mountains are getting pretty hard 
to climb up. So for the rest of the afternoon, it's up over that peak there, across that ridge across the back there that you can see, and then slowly migrate my way towards Federation Peak.